Hey, I'm Andrew Bacon. I'm Brooke Bacon. I'm Finley Bacon. I'm Ava Bacon. And I'm Beck Bacon. <laughs> and we bought the a pop-up pop camper. camper. Thankfully, we bought it from some friends of ours. We wanted to update it. So we're going to show you how on this episode of yeah. Your Design. <laughs> This is part two of a multi-video series on how we updated our camper. Okay, first we're tackling these cabinet doors. So they're MDF core, but they're still in good shape. So I didn't want to rebuild them. And they have like a film over the top, like a plastic wallpaper almost. And so in order to take these off the easiest, I've got a heat gun that we gently go across the top. We have to be careful and not do it too hot or too long. But what that does is that kind of loosens the glue, original glue off, and then we were able to peel it back, which took a while, but in the end, it was worth it to get those faces nice and smooth again. So here I am showing you peeling it back, and as you can see, it does not come off super easy, but you know, we, we worked it out, we kept heating it up and peeling it back, and after shredding our fingers, we finally got it done. Then my wife painted the cabinet faces with some awesome primer just to get them nice and smooth and get them ready for paint. We use a roller for the faces and then a brush for those nooks and crannies around the outside. Meanwhile, I was back in the camper reassembling the cabinets. So here I'm putting on those heat shields on each side of the furnace and then continuing to reassemble that bottom base cabinet of the galley. I got the top put back on and then I've got to feed those hoses down in there and then they'll come out that hole where my hand is later on. So it's a work in progress as I'm figuring out how to put this thing back together. Then I grabbed the small base cabinet that goes right by the entry and it's a pretty easy one so I set it back in its place and it's really just a matter of screwing it in exactly as it was. After I got it secure it was time to do a test fit. Oh yeah, solid. Next, I reinstalled the metal threshold right at the base of the entry. Next, I grabbed the left base cabinet and put it in. This is the left side of the dining table seat as well as the left side of the bed that folds down. After I screwed it all in, I threaded the receptacle back through the hole in the base cabinet there and put that in. It's just like a receptacle and outlet plate in your house. And yeah, it looks good. And there's the back. Sweet. Okay, so here's where we're at now. Got the small cabinet and then the bottom base of the galley and then this other side here that I didn't film just because it, you know, it's just screwing it in real basic. So yeah, it's awesome. Back inside, my wife is starting the recovering of the cushions project. Here, Brooke's measuring and cutting out the new fabric that she picked out. The cushions all have a thin piece of plywood on the bottom of them and so it was easy to wrap the fabric around and then using our staple gun we secured the fabric into that wood bottom. Then we folded up the ends and then went along the side there and boom! Looks great! Yeah, we are really happy with how this turned out. After that it was time for me to tackle installing a trailer hitch under my van. Are you serious? I found lifts on Facebook Marketplace, so I was able to lift the van up, and then yeah, I prepped the bottom, I read some manuals and watched some tutorials, and yeah, it went really easily. I bought it from an online trailer site that I'll link to below, and then yeah, Brooke helped me lift it up underneath. Once I got it up there, I was able to secure it, and yeah, it just took some time, but all in all, it went really well. And boom, I'm done. This is awesome. So I finally crawled out from underneath, and yes, it looks great. So there's the trailer hitch ready to go. Back in the camper, Brooke is knocking out the priming of the cabinets. This is so awesome. So first she's using a roller and she went around and did all of the spots that she could with that roller. And so yeah, you can see it all around here. She knocked it out and then she'll go back and use the brush for the finer tuning. After the primer was dry, Brooke started the actual painting of all the cabinets with a nice brush. And so she picked what's called Dorian Gray. And once we were done, we realized, oh, it is just too much gray in here. So we actually changed our mind later on. You'll see the final color at the end of the video. And so she's killing it with painting. And then after she was done, I went in and fixed some of the edge banding that was coming up. To do that, I grabbed some Loctite Extreme Glue and really just peeled some of it back and then applied the glue as much as I could and I made sure and had a paper towel handy in case it leaked out. But then, yeah, I just pressed it down really firm. Then I grabbed some painter's tape and just used strips to press down on it and make sure it was holding securely while it could dry.
Okay, cool. Now it's secure and I'll give it a day to make sure it sets well. Meanwhile, Brooke was finishing painting the rest of the inside of the pop-up. And so little did we know that we were going to not really dig the color and change it later. And I'm excited to show you that next color. But maybe you'll like this color and, you know, decide to go that direction too. And that's cool. She also painted the cabinet doors that same color because we hadn't quite made our decision yet. That would come later once we saw it all complete. But yeah, she rocked it on the cabinet doors just like you see here. And yeah, we're just rocking and rolling. Okay, now all the painting is done, or so we think at this point. So I want to kind of give you an idea of what it looked like at this point. By the way, we did not decide to paint the inside of the cabinets. We just didn't think it was necessary, especially once those doors are on. So yeah, here's the inside, and this is you can now definitely see it's more of a gray color. And yeah, this is what it looks like. And it does look good on camera. It's nice and clean, but we just didn't think it popped enough, so we changed it later. Next, I tackled the galley top cabinet. So here I'm taking off the components of the countertop because I want to change out the countertop into something different. So I'm taking off the little grab bar that you use to pull this top cabinet down when you put it in storage. Once I got the handle off, I was able to then move on to the water pump system. So this was just four screws. So I unscrewed those and then I pulled it all the way out, including the hose. Awesome. So then there's a little bar that you use to hold down that water pump handle when the camper's in transit. So I took him out. Now I need to take off the countertop because I want to replace it. And so I flipped it over and I went to work just unscrewing all of the L brackets. And then there's other pieces like here, for example, there's two bar brackets that hold up the little stove assembly. And so I'm taking those out as well as I go along. Cool. Got those off. and I'll just save those for reinstallation later. And I'm just going to work my way around more L brackets to get this countertop off. Everything was going great. And then I found a snag. There's a little extra bracket for the stove assembly that helps hold it in place. And so I had to get creative to get the one last screw out. So I'm using a crescent wrench here and I was able to get it out and uh, it's all good. But man, that would have been sticky if I wasn't able to do that. So then the last few L bracket screws and we are in business this counter is off so i knew early on i wanted to upgrade the countertops and the table and a few other things and so i found some really nice three-quarter inch cabinet grade maple plywood i already had it cut to width and so here i'm taking the top and i'm getting it all squared up to use as my template and then i grab my pencil and just trace the outside to get my cut lines and then i trace the inside as well to get all those lines nice and ready to make those cuts Okay, good to go. Time to bust out the track saw. So my first cut was just cutting off the side there to get the cabinet top to its right length. Then I had just a little bit to cut off the width there, so I got that knocked out. For the inside cuts, I wanted those lines to be nice and straight, so I plunge cut my track saw into the middle there and just did a little bit along all the way to the corner, just enough. I did that on each side and I had some really good success there. To finish up those cuts, I got my jigsaw out and clamped the piece down so it wouldn't move and I was able to get the blade in there and do those rounded inside corners and it worked out great. I also did this for the outside corners but ended up not filming it. Okay, cool, got this one done and I unclamped it and I wanted to stop and just test fit and make sure that it worked. So this hole is for the sink. And so I grabbed the sink real quick and made sure it fit and let's see. Boom, awesome, fits great. So I clamped it again and I cut the inside of the next one. And there we go. Awesome. This is the stove assembly, and so I grabbed that to also test it out. So I have to kind of put that LP hookup underneath and then make sure it fits. I've got a lot stacked on there, but yeah, it works great. Now I'm cutting out the hole for the water pump assembly. Okay, cool. Got that hole done and grabbed the pump assembly. And then, oh, my best buddy's here. He needs his helmet put on. So dad life, you know, you got to pause and take care of stuff. And so I always love having my best bud around, man. He's the best. Okay. Feel good? Yeah. All right. 
Okay, back to the project. So I thread the hose through and let's see if it fits. And boom, perfect. Love it when things fit just right. So yeah, that's good to go. Next, I had to drill the hole for the little bar that pivots to hold down that pump handle. So I drilled that in and then tested it out and we're good to go. I didn't show you the sanding part because that's always super boring, but yeah, I sanded down the counter really, really nice. And then now I'm staining it with a Verithane wood stain. It's kind of a weathered oak vibe that I really like. I thought fit really good with our color scheme in the camper. I'm also using a stain sponge, which I usually like to use. It just makes it easier to apply the stain and get it smooth all the way around. And so, yeah, I do the top and the sides and just really get it all in there good. And then once I get it all finished, I let it dry for at least 24 hours. Once the stain's dry, I come back the next day and I'm coating the top now with Verithane brand polyurethane. And I love this stuff. It goes, it goes on real clear. It's nice and smooth. And so I'm going to get it all on there, let it dry for a couple hours, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to sand it with some really fine high grit sandpaper, like usually 600. Sometimes I even go up to 1,000 and then repeat the process at least three times. Meanwhile, Brooke is rocking it, painting our cabinet faces with the brand new color choice. So like I mentioned earlier, we ended up changing our mind from the gray to more of a blue. And this is called Seaworthy from Sherwin-Williams. And so Brooke was a champ and repainted everything. So she knocked out all the cabinet doors and then she went over and painted the top cabinet of the galley that I had just been working on when I was updating the countertop for it. And she got that done, and then she moved over to the inside of the camper and tackled that. And so, yeah, she was a champ and repainted, and ultimately, we loved the outcome. We thought this color was great. So it just took a little bit more time, but ultimately, I think we were super happy with how it turned out. After Brooke finished painting and everything was dry, I was able to then test fit the countertop for the top galley cabinet there. And so it fits great. So now I'm going to take it over to my workbench and turn it over upside down and install this bad boy. Okay, cool. So we're all good. The sink went right in. It had a couple butterfly nuts underneath to install it and uh, attach it to the countertop. And then I'm threading in the water hose, pump, faucet. Got that in, just took a couple of screws, and then I carried it into the camper to install the top cabinet to the base cabinet of the galley here. So I set it down, and then I realized that I didn't have the handle to put on when I put it down, it helps kind of hold that thing level. So I threw the handle right back on real quick and then it gave me something to grab onto. So I gently rolled it down and got it onto the floor and then I attached the hinge back on the base cabinet there. It took a little bit of a balancing act, but I got it and then just screwed in those screws one at a time and it really went on pretty easily. And done. Rolled it back up nice and smooth. There it is, looking pretty great. Meanwhile, my girls helped me lay in these mats that we found at a garage sale for like two bucks. We thought they'd be a perfect insulator and a little extra padding under Brooke and I's mattress. So the girls are doing an awesome job laying these out. And then I went in and cut with my utility knife just the edges so that it would fit in perfectly. And done, awesome. Next, I installed the cabinet hinges onto the newly painted cabinet doors. The cabinet hinges were in good shape and we thought the gold color looks kind of good with the Seaworthy, so we decided to keep them. Sweet, ready to install. Before I installed the cabinet doors, I had a few other things to install, which was really fun. This is the electrical panel front and so yeah, just screwed that guy in. And then on the back side, I needed to reinsert the housing that protects all the switches and the connections. So got that all tightened up and good to go. Then I moved over to put the faceplate on this receptacle. Man, that just feels so great. Then real quick, I reinstalled the drain to the sink, which was super easy. Just fit it back on and then use my flathead to tighten it up. Now it's cabinet door installation time. Let's go. This went just about how you would expect. So I just went one by one. And since I didn't change out the hinges, it made it really nice just to be able to put them right back in the holes that they came out of. So that was helpful. Okay, we're finally done for this part of the video. So I've got the brand new updated galley. Look at the before and now the 
after. Oh my goodness, this thing is looking great. So yeah, we got a lot done on this video. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to do even more updates. We may even get to wrap this whole project up. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.